<laughs> it's actually here. Ugh, it's been about six years since we've gotten a Halo game, about nine since we've gotten a decent one, and fucking eleven since we've played a great one. For fans new and old, it's easy to see the prominent rift in the series, what many would describe as the Bungie golden years and the later 343 disorganized mess. Now that's not to say the 343 titles were entirely crap, there was still a lot to love. Halo 4 had excellent gunplay, maps, and some fun new ideas. Even the campaign was alright at times. And Halo 5 had... <laughs> Can we just move on, please? I think it's safe to say Halo has gone through a pretty rough identity crisis this past decade. With every new feature tried and implemented, it seems to have moved further and further away from what made Halo, Halo. You could feel it in the class-based gameplay, the way the weapons sound and feel. You could see it in the armor designs, the way the enemies and vehicles started to look. It felt like Halo as a series went from being a trailblazer of ideas and innovation to a franchise desperately trying to stay relevant by grasping at its competitors' coattails. Halo and the conversation around Halo was changing pretty rapidly. What was once the standout shining king of not only a genre, but gaming itself has now been reduced to a series with great classics, but arguably lackluster modern titles. Fans started to lose trust in 343 as a developer. Players questioned if 343 even understood Halo in general. This was it. Halo Infinite was truly 343's last shot. This was the make or break moment for Halo. So, how did it go? Oh my god! Halo... Halo is back. Obviously, the biggest and newest change to the classic Halo formula is the addition of an open world. Boy, it sure is swell to be out here with all this fresh air! Previously, Halo followed a mission-to-mission, point-A-to-point-B -to -point system with the occasional wide-open area. But even though many fights took place in hallways, rooms, and smaller, condensed, calculated zones, Halo is still widely known for its sandbox-style combat. Halo Infinite takes the sandbox and turns it into the whole goddamn beach. From the main mission structure to the varied strongholds, all the way to the quick capturable FOBs and collectibles, there is never a dull or forced moment. The feeling of this game is as if Halo had a baby with Breath of the Wild. No, <laughs> don't you say it. Don't you fucking say it. For the love of God, don't you say it. The bulk of the side content exists mostly for you to get your hands filthy with more alien blood, but it flows so seamlessly and with enough variety that it feels like one really, really good Halo mission. Even smaller activities like saving groups of captured space marine homies is rewarding and enjoyable. Uh, look, everyone, it's the Master Chief. He's here to save us. Ha <laughs> ha, get him, Chief. Shoom, boom, tap, 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 tap. And vehicles play the largest role in a Halo title yet. The more shit you do, the wider your selection of vehicles becomes. And summoning a tank out of the goddamn sky never gets old. <laughs> you probably thought that tank was gonna crush me. Sorry, my comedy goes a lot deeper than- you can even fill a Razorback with rescued Marines, equip them with previously unlocked legendary weapons, and inflict a cosmic terror on any who oppose you. In addition to the fun, wide-open vehicle sandbox, movement has been greatly improved in general by the new grappling hook, which I'm pretty sure you already know how the reception went for this. It is time, my friend. Take your rightful place. Sit upon your throne. But what if they don't like it? What if they say grappling hooks don't belong in a Halo game? That's just the thing. Grappling hooks belong in every game. Yeah, spoiler alert, numbnuts, it fucking rocks! Swinging on cliff sides to ambush the enemy like a more violent Spider-Man? Snagging onto a chieftain and knocking him out with the most satisfying punch animation I have ever seen? Grappling a fusion coil to throw out the next one? <laughs> Shit. Strictly from a gameplay perspective, this is Halo at its best. Finding Spartan cores to upgrade your abilities, swinging by a previously captured FOB to pick up marines to roll up on a fucking assassination target, taking him out and getting a new unique weapon to use while taking down a banished fortress. Truly, the flow of combat has never felt better. And all of this isn't even taking into consideration how good the main story is. So to keep it short and spoiler free, it's minimalistic, but meaningful. Each set piece stands out and the contrast of 
the scale of everything really shines here. We've had so many campaigns filled with massive units and large scale teams, but here we have the chief, the weapon, the pilot, and their many interactions with the characters in the unfamiliar world around them. The banished are brutal, but riveting. Zeta Halo is expansive, but personal. I honestly had a fucking blast, more so than I really thought I would. I mean, even the series famously known for unimaginative boss fights managed to make multiple this time around that I found genuinely gripping and fun. What's interesting is this is obviously the biggest departure from the classic Halo formula yet, but in the pursuit of change and evolution, they managed to make a game that feels more familiar than anything we've played in a decade. The multiplayer, the quintessential aspect of what makes Halo the gaming goliath that it is. When I think Halo, I think multiplayer. I think about all the shared moments I've spent with friends and strangers alike, all the close matches, the unbelievable shots, the rage, and the laughter. The multiplayer matters in a special way. It's not some forgettable or replaceable installment. It has to be different. It has to be good. If the multiplayer fails, Halo fails. From the accessible, goofy custom games to the foundation of what we know as esports today, Halo wasn't just groundbreaking, it was the whole goddamn earthquake of multiplayer. Infinite had some pretty big fucking boots to fill, and after years of disappointment, I truly didn't think it would. I was wrong. I'm going to be as clear and blunt as humanly possible here. This is the best multiplayer gameplay we've had since Halo 3. Yes, I'm saying gameplay-wise, this is better than Reach 4 and 5. Every single weapon has been given loving, calculated care. Everything has punch, texture, and feels great to wield. Except for the Ravager! Fuck the Ravager! Me and my homies hate the Ravager! The skewer feels chonky as hell. The sentinel beam feels terrifying. And the gravity hammer, I, I just don't possess the words to properly describe how this weapon makes me feel, so I'll just let this video explain it. <laughs> oh shit, you're a spicy one. Oh, whoa! I, was, uh, I was just doing my taxes. See, uh, uh, can you get out of here? Even the movement in Halo is special, but constantly changing. I mean, Christ, just the aspect of sprinting creates heated life or death internet arguments. From dashing to rolling to the absolute fucking travesty that was the Halo Reach jetpack. <laughs> That fucking jetpack. Movement in Halo games has never really been the same, but Infinite has perfected it in a way that I've never seen before and that has both sides of the community satisfied. For starters, sprinting has been reduced to a tiny speed boost, meaning you can efficiently play the game without ever using it. But if you need that extra second, it's always there at the cost of your weapon not being ready instantly. That mixed with the Halo 3 style physics and non-intrusive sliding and mantling makes for the best movement loop I've seen in years. All other movement options have been moved to a Halo 3 type equipment that's placed all over the map like anything else, meaning if you want to dash, super jump, or swing across the map, it works like a skill-based power weapon. The equipment ranges from enhanced movement to heightened senses to the... The Repulsor, arguably my single favorite thing in any Halo game ever. And no, not just because all the girls growing up used to call me the Repulsor. <laughs> But because of its genius design, it's really simple. Honestly, point in a direction and blast anything away with a huge concussive wave. Send enemy Spartans off the map and into the void or into a wall, crushing them. Look down and blast yourself upwards for a super jump. Got a tank spawn killing you? You can reflect the literal tank missile back at it. The applications are endless. The only limit is what you're willing to do with the tools given to you. And this is how everything feels in Halo Infinite. The sandbox player synergy hasn't felt this strong since the Bungie days. Infinite's gameplay feels like an old friend you're excited to see again. And the good news is they've buried their horrible, horrible past. Hopping on with friends has never been easier, partly because the multiplayer is now free to play. Oh, yeah, we, we, we should probably talk about that, shouldn't we? <laughs> Did you think I wouldn't have complaints? Did you think I wouldn't criticize this game, huh? You fool! I can shit on any video game! My gamer rage knows no bounds! What? <laughs> Yep, the monetization is fucking awful. The store is insanely expensive. It's like $20 for one suit of armor, and then that same suit of armor can be locked to an armor core, which is some arbitrary restrictive bullshit that means sometimes you can't mix certain armors and colors with each other. And by the way, even the colors can be like eight fucking dollars. Oh boy, should I order lunch or should I purchase blue? So moving on away from the store and to the battle pass, the battle pass is actually pretty good. It's like 10 bucks and you get a lot of stuff, but like any battle pass, you still need to grind it out by playing and earning XP through challenging. 
Oh god, the challenges. Oh Christ, the challenges. Some are insanely specific and can take hours if not days to finish. Then, when you actually do finish one, it's like 200 XP and you need a thousand for a single level. <sighs> As of recording this right now, it's pretty fucked. But in fairness, 343 in less than like a month have made multiple really good changes. So who knows, by the time I release this, many issues might have already been fixed. That'll be fun to see. Ah! Oh, hey guys, it's uh, me from four months in the future because animation takes a long time to make and I just want to make a quick little update here. So the good news is they actually improved the shop, progression system, and stability a ton. But the problem now is for a live service free to play game, the content updates are few and far between. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love this game, but if they want players to keep coming back every single week, we need more large content updates, events, rotating playlists, new maps and modes to keep things fresh. And that seems to be the general consensus right now. The game is excellent, but if it wants to stay relevant, it needs more frequent and bigger content updates. Alright, that's it. Back to the main- <laughs> As it stands right now, the progression, cosmetics, and a few other things still need a lot of work, but I've never been more optimistic about a game's future than I am with Infinite. It's clear that 343 cares about Halo Infinite, and some of these issues can probably be attributed to the vile corporate warlocks that oversee every monetary decision. What matters is the game plays and sounds fucking excellent. Excellent. And speaking of which, I haven't even mentioned what might be the game's greatest achievement. This is a first for my channel. I've never actually touched on the sound design aspect of a game before in these longer style review videos, but I would genuinely be doing this game a disservice if I didn't. This is without a doubt one of the best sounding video games I have ever played in my life. Doom Eternal, Last of Us 2, Returnal. These games blew me away with everything from their fully design, soundtrack, voice acting, and sound effects. Halo Infinite is no different. All the weapons have such punch and depth that I've never heard in a Halo game. Just listen to the BR in Halo 4 versus the BR in in infinite. One of these things I want to smother with a pillow, and the other I want to take on a nice date and introduce them to my parents. Even the sound cues when you pick up a skull or a collectible are outstanding and filled with character. And for the two and a half hours that it runs, the soundtrack is breathtaking. 343 has clearly moved to a sound that resembles the original trilogy here while expanding it and making it their own in a great way. And that's kind of how everything is in Halo Infinite. In many ways, this game feels like one massive apology from 343. Reverting back to the classic art style, the classic gameplay, this legitimately feels like the sequel to Halo 3 we always deserved. I believe without a doubt, Halo Infinite is on track to become the next great classic. And we're just getting started. We haven't even seen Forge yet, we haven't seen proper customs, and it's already so damn good. Before Infinite released, and while watching all the trailers and sneak peeks, I was really expecting to make an entirely different video. I was prepared to be disappointed. I'm so happy to say that I was completely wrong. <sighs> now, if you'd excuse me, I have to go scream at my teammates because they have no fucking idea how to pick up the goddamn oddball!